for their safety, as we know that each country is different. Sometimes when yeah. you come to change, you disappear. <laughs> would you advise and say that would be an opportunity that they can take? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's never going to be smooth. You're there to say, okay, guys, I am here to make a contribution. Mm-hmm. We can learn together. Yes. We can change things together. Hello, Dr. Najib uh, Lukoya. Thank you so much for coming on PhD Hard Talk and wanting to have a conversation with me in regards to mentoring, coaching, and helping us in terms of our current difficulty, which is making decisions whether to stay in academia or go to industry or start our own businesses. So the floor is to you. Uh, thank you so much for hosting me. It's, it, it's really great to, to talk to young scholars out there. Um, I was one, um, completed 2015, um, um, 2015, yes. The biggest dilemma for me normally is, um, yes, so when you work through your studies, then what next? Mm-hmm. And um, Normally, uh, especially at PhD level, you have a very, very high temptation to keep pushing, uh, for example, in your line of research. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more comforting. It's, um, uh, um, 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 I mean, it's easier. Uh, so you will look around probably for postdoc research or work on similar projects or um, uh, be part of the um, uh, academia or, or, or teaching staff, stuff like this. I mean, this is the easy stuff to do uh, if you get once you get an opportunity. But um, I would think that as you work through uh, your studies, uh, especially these days, it's also very important to link the theory to practice um, out there. And for okay. me, uh, as as a uh, personally, this was very critical. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and and this informed the change in my study focus and topic. As you know, uh, during the PhD work, along the way, I realized I was um, uh, so at the beginning, I was mainly focusing on um, land use and water resource management uh, to ensure safe water supply um, over a period of time to to communities, especially Mm -hmm. urban communities. And then I realized there was a bigger problem in the urban ecosystem, and that was poor sanitation. So even if you deal with the water quality, you know, monitoring and make sure you treat it well, or make sure you uh, address the issues that are uh, dealing with water quality, uh, you have a big challenge of the catchment where you're going to actually supply this water. They keep polluting it anyway. So, <laughs> so I, 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 around that, then I kept together with my very, very flexible professor in um, Vienna, Professor Thomas Hain. We, we, we worked around and, and a number of research teams uh, my topic and my research focus to suit the reality in back home in, in Uganda. Mm-hmm. And for me, this was very fulfilling. So linking the theory to practice and, and not necessarily focusing on, oh, this is a very nice model. I hope I can create a new one. And, but you are not solving real problems out there mm-hmm. in the world. So for me, that is the, the very first point. And uh, that creates a lot of um, enthusiasm Mm -hmm. in terms of uh, being a problem solver. So the first point is trying to link theory to practice. Mm -hmm. So your research work to reality, and that will lead you to problem solving, real problem solving. So ideally, um, uh, being an African student um, in Europe, it was great, I mean, to, to be in, in Austria, Vienna, very nice uh, uh, country, you know, 
you have everything working you know water systems working wastewater treatment systems working yeah the the, the rivers and streams are, are really pristine you know clean water you can jump in and swim but back home uh, this is the rivers and people struggle every day to get safe water mm-hmm. but at the same time you have very poor practices that actually make that water um unpalatable so so i needed to make a contribution to this so uh having um a problem solving approach to me created a lot of um eagerness enthusiasm uh while i was in europe to look at mm-hmm. the state of the art systems there and how they can be translated into simple local solutions back home and um i must tell you the um the story is totally different now you mm-hmm. you you i i gained quite many many opportunities um even before i completed um um real time projects that are interesting so it was a matter of really um a choice to see okay this will be more interesting from my career development so need not being uh staying completely out of touch of the research and academia so linking it there but trying to also contribute to um uh, the industry out there so working with governments working with donors working with private sector working with local communities to 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 have those solutions work for them as well as feeding them into uh, knowledge and research in the academia so and and that is more or less what i'm doing right now kind of yeah oh, wow that is amazing so basically what you said there is that you gained knowledge from your outskirts which is the external when you're in vienna and you realize that you could take that back to uganda so which part of uganda are you in um kampala actually kampala okay so you take take... uganda yes i know about kampala there's a song about kampala <laughs> 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 I know that song. <laughs> I don't know Kampala, but I know the song. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. But so you've taken it back to Kampala and you've looked at it from an entrepreneur's eye and you've said I can bring research into this, but I need to work with the private and the public sector to ensure that I earn and also change the lives of my community. Is that what you're saying? exactly and uh, wow. practically we then make it more clear so when i left my phd 2015 in uh, austria yeah i came back to kampala i joined kampala capital city authority mm-hmm. as the and and i was given an opportunity to work with the, the city mm-hmm. to deal with uh, uh, the public health and environment uh, aspects in the city so um along that line i was given an opportunity to lead um the the team of um environment and sanitation and that included i was leading a big team of really young enthusiastic people so uh one team dealing with solid waste management mm-hmm. the other was a uh, uh, environment and pollution control another team was working on water and sanitation and the fourth team was working on public health and environment these teams are still there mm-hmm. though i eventually left again to more new challenges right now um after 2020 but mm-hmm. um we did quite a lot of stuff so uh, every day was a challenge and every day was an opportunity to create a solution for wow. this city and for yeah. me uh, that was uh, uh, one of the critical turning point uh, in my career yes that is amazing so in terms of advice then for somebody let's say from brazil who's 
in Vienna as well and thinking actually my research I can see that the model can be taken back home for their safety as we know that each country is different sometimes yeah. when you come with change you may get killed sometimes when yeah. you come with change you disappear <laughs> so what advice yeah. would you give them <laughs> you know can they go to a different continent um well yeah continent yeah different country and take that model instead of going back to their home country, would you advise and say that would be an opportunity that they can take? Yeah, definitely. I mean, why not? So uh, when we started, when I went back to Uganda, uh, I mean, it's Kampala. It's not always all smooth. Uh, and, and this has to be in someone's head. If you're looking for a very smooth path to doing work, to delivering innovations, to creating new opportunities, it's not a, it's never going to be smooth. You need to deal with uh, institutional politics, you need to deal with the political economy, you need to deal with um, community, you know, uh, uh, mainstreamism, you know, <laughs> people who think unilaterally, they, you don't want to, they, you know, government bureaucracy, which, you know, barriers, uh, private sector is more, uh, is always looking at risk mitigation uh, in terms of um, uh, businesses. So uh, innovations are quite uh, slow to adapt in such environments. So, and, and for me, for, for example, for PhD students, the, it is simply a global village. Uh, right now, I am working with a number of um, um, countries across Africa, and they are all totally different. Uh, some are Anglophones, some are Francophones in my current work. And, uh, uh, oh, I also have Mozambique, which is uh, Portuguese speaking. So, uh, and, and, and we are dealing with Dif totally different solutions. Some are I'm so excited typically... for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm some so are typically... excited. Yeah, so some are typically focusing on infrastructure, uh, but in systems don't work. Mm -hmm. And you try to push that, you know what, for infrastructure to work, you need systems to work. Mm -hmm. So eventually you evolve, you adapt, you, you become part of the and, and you don't go there to simply tell them you know i know how to do this because <laughs> because i have done it or i've seen it somewhere being <laughs> done no 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 no. you're there to say okay guys um i am here to make a contribution mm -hmm. we can learn together yes we can change things together mm -hmm. we can bring ideas on table together yeah and that will make you so dynamic i've worked with um so besides um, in the African countries, I'm also working with um, a number of uh, European, you know, even UK. Um, I have very great friends uh, at Leeds, Professor mm -hmm. Barbara Evans. Uh, I've worked with her on a number of research there. Um, I've worked with uh, colleagues in Switzerland, in German, in USA. Uh, colleagues at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So, I mean, but no one knew me mm -hmm. by 2015. But the idea was that um, we, the enthusiasm, the willingness to find solutions, mm -hmm. and people will always see it. People will see that, that, that you, you know, uniqueness that you bring to the table. The new um, um, dynamic you bring to the team. So for me, that is a breaking point. And of course, uh, networking, willing to learn, willing to share, willing, many scholars actually, and I've realized my colleagues who are typically scholars have this mindset of testing and refining solutions and making sure they are perfect, before they bring them out. Yeah. That is, that's what I've learned in the academia. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen, well, it may be not for everyone, but I've seen it. But what, how the world works is... <laughs> it's different. 
Yeah, yeah. You come with your raw ideas, and and sometimes they are really wild. But uh, don't fear to put them on the table. Yeah. Respect people. Respect hierarchy. Respect leadership. Be humble with your suggestions and ideas, but demonstrate that you are there to solve a problem together and learn to solve problem. So for me, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, what you said is incredible and it's so insightful. And I am very, very, very much appreciative of your time. And I know you were having family time and you decided to share this with me. So thank you again. As your parting words, what would you say to somebody that's thinking, okay, I've just realized and I've never realized that in research that the globe is actually so small because I'm a scientist. I can actually work and network globally. Now they're excited and they're there like, I'm ready to go. What advice do you have for them? Push further, go for it. I, I, for me, it is, it is about that. Just go for it. Try to make sure that you're not noble. <laughs> there are people who are noble out there. You are part of that solution yes. globally. It's, it's not just where you come from, but also in Europe. You can be noble anywhere. Just work on the solution and go for it. I, I think for me, that's it. With, I mean, definitely it's important to be confident with your ideas. Uh, it's, it, it's important that people prove, uh, and, and for academicians, it's, I mean, important that they can also, you, you have traceability of growth in career. So through publications, through contributions to research. Yeah. So go for it. Just go for it. Wow. Yeah. Well, guys at home, right, you've heard it from Dr. Najibi. Um, literally, the world is your oyster, but it doesn't mean you have to be arrogant um, just because you've come through with something, you've discovered something. Essentially, the wise words were, the world's your oyster. However, be willing to learn. You don't know it all. You know, sometimes we forget that we don't know it all. And we then react to situations. Let us be humble with our knowledge and be willing to learn as well, because industry is different from academia, as you've just said. Um, you know, so you have to marry the two together. They're not divorced. In order for you to move forward, you have to respect both sides and then you shall conquer the world. Well, you know, in a sense, scientifically. <laughs> But thank you so much for your wise words, um, Dr. Najibi. The sun is setting in Kampala. So have a good night. How do we say thank you in Ugandan? Weba lenyo. Weba lenyo, Dr. Weba lenyo, yes. In Swahili, <laughs> asante sana. <laughs> oh, I can say asante sana. I didn't realize we could speak in Swahili. So asante sana. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's getting dark now. It, you've joined my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I was in it, the compound, so it's dark. But uh, yeah, thank it's you. It's no problem. It's been amazing. So thank you again. All right. Bye. <laughs>